Hi everyone, this is Mindy Egan and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be creating a card using some of the new products from the Lawn Fawn Summer 2022 release. This is one of my favorite cards that I created and I really wanted to share it with you. I'll be playing with the Canvas and Easel die set and also the Art Supplies die set. I'm combining it with some previous released stamp sets, including You Autumn Know, which is where that jumping mouse comes from, Magic Messages, Very Special, which is the mouse and the overalls, Virtual Friends and Virtual Friends Add-on, which is where that plant and that small waving mouse comes from. I have all of my images stamped in the Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink on the 80 pound white cardstock and I'm starting by coloring in my mice using Copic markers. I'm going to have all of the colors listed at the top of the screen. For my mice for their bodies I am using E55, 53 and 51 and I'm just adding the darkest shading so the E55 to the back of the mice. So for this one, it's the back of the head and under the arms and then blending out with those lightest colors. And for this one where it looks like he's waving, I'm adding the darkest color to the outside edges of the face and then blending that out. For the ears and also the nose and the bellies, I'll be using R02, which is the ears, and R00 for the belly. For my plant, I'm going to use kind of a reddish brown combo. I have E18, E19, and E97. And then bright greens for my plant, which I will be using YG01 and YG17. So I started with the lightest color first and then just added a line for the shadow. For my bib overalls, which I thought was super cute to go with my little painter mouse, I have B06, 04, and 02. On the sentiment, there are just some little tiny areas where you could add some color. So I just randomly grabbed different colors of the rainbow and added those into those small areas. So I don't have a lot of critters or a lot of images to my scene because most of it's going to be taken up by the die cuts. Now that everything is colored, I'm going to use the coordinating dies to die cut them out. Now the sentiment I am die cutting out of this paint splatter, which is off of one of the die sets, it fit in there just perfectly. The easel I die cut from some dark wood grain cardstock and then for the little stool I die cut from white so I can make it whatever color I want and I love the wood grain texture. I die cut all of my pieces from the art supplies out of white cardstock so that I could color them with a Copic marker and I just have a scratch piece of paper here for one so you can see it better and also to kind of catch my overspill of coloring with my markers. I didn't list the colors used on this because I was just randomly grabbing from my collection and for the paint tubes and the paint splatters I just kind of added some random colors, some part of the rainbow. I did some bright pink and bright yellows because it's going to match my background that I'm going to be creating. And then I also have paint brushes there that I will be just grabbing some different shades of brown. Now this is a card that I'm actually recreating so the picture might look a little bit different than what the finished card is. And the reason for that is I didn't realize I grabbed a different brick stencil. I have a few different brick stencils in my collection. So if it looks a little bit different, that is why. So here I'm just coloring those paint brushes using some E30s, I believe. And for the actual brush piece, which has a separate, it's a separate die, I used some E70s. So in that range, I just grabbed a couple different shades. The other piece of the paintbrush I die cut from some silver matte cardstock which you'll be seeing a little bit later. I tried to add some flicks to my paintbrush to give it a little bit of texture. Not sure you can see it real well. And then here I'm just adding some really light blues to color in my little jar that my paintbrushes are going to sit in. So now this is the assembly of all these art supplies. So here we have the kind of color of the tube or the label I guess it would be that goes on the front and I'm doing a lot of this with the liquid glue it was just a lot easier than messing with a tape runner for some of these small pieces and then also of course my trusty tweezers so here's where I added that little kind of shiny part of the paintbrush and then added the brush on top I think it would also be really cool if you colored those tops of the paintbrushes in different colors to make it look like they were used when painting on the easel or the picture that's going to be on the easel and then here I'm just going to take those little paint splatters and add them to my little painter's palette, just kind of going around the shape of that palette. Now I have all these put together. I'm going to set them off on the side to work on my background. And here is that brick stencil. Now this one you see is actually the Lawn Fawn brick stencil. So I did grab the right one here for the video. 
and I'm holding that down over some 80 pound white cardstock on my Make Art Station, so using my magnets, and I am ink blending on Picked Raspberry, Squeezed Lemonade, Salvaged Patina, and Wilted Violet. So when Picked uh, Raspberry and Squeezed Lemonade overlap, it's going to give me that orange, so I'll be able to get the whole rainbow in here. Now it's about this point that I remember I always you know, kind of leave out wilted violet. It doesn't get enough room. So I went to the end before adding my blue and I added that purple to make sure I was getting it in my rainbow. Then I came in with a salvaged patina and added that. And when I overlap with squeeze lemonade, I'm going to get kind of this really bright limey shade of green. And I just love when salvaged patina overlaps with wilted violet. So after I have all of these colors on, I can remove my stencil, which also actually has pixie spray on the back, which is a low tack adhesive. Even though I wash my stencil, it stays kind of sticky. Now I'm coming back in with my blending tool and whatever leftover ink I have on it, some of them I had already cleaned, so there wasn't a lot of ink on there, but I'm just blending back over those areas to kind of dim down that stark white of the cardstock underneath. Now, after I have this done, I thought it would be really fun to add some splatters to the background. You could add different colors of splatters, but I decided to go for a gold splatter. So I'm going to bring out the Perfect Pearls in gold, and I'm just using this little spoon to put some on my work surface. I'm adding a couple drops of water, and then I'm going to mix that up with a paintbrush and flick this all over the background. I just love that splattered look. It kind of adds to that artsy feel that we have going on for the card. For my canvas that I die cut out of white cardstock, I'm going to mask off the very outer edges so it does give a stitched detail on there and I'm lining my post-it tape right up to that stitched detail so it's going to have a nice thin white border and then I'm bringing my blending tools back in and I'm ink blending on those same colors. Now I always clean my tools off or kind of swipe them on cardstock to get excess ink off of them. And this almost turned into a hot mess. I was getting really dark circles in some areas. I did not do a very good blending job here, but I'm going to be placing a sentiment over it so it really doesn't matter in the end as long as I had color kind of going all the way around. I'm going to take my stool that I die cut out of the white wood grain cardstock and I'm going to add squeezed lemonade to it. The reason I chose that color is I just needed something bright to kind of pop off of the background. And then the last thing I need to add color to is going to be a floor for my whole scene. And once again, I have some of the wood grain cardstock, and I think this is the paper bag color. And I'm taking walnut ink from Lawn Fawn, and I'm swiping that across that textured background. Now, the walnut was almost too dark for me, so I needed to dim that down just a little bit. And I'm going to bring in dough ink, and I'm going to blend that over the top with a blending brush. So that kind of helped smooth out how dark that walnut ink was. Off screen, I'm going to trim this down just a little bit and I'll probably leave about two inches, maybe, maybe a little bit less, just to have enough for my scene. I'm gonna go ahead and add this to the bottom of my card using the tape runner. I had a little bit extra there. I must've cut my cardstock wrong. So I'm just going to trim that off with my paper trimmer so it's all flush and even. And then I can move on to assembling my scene. So I added tape runner behind the jar because it's got a little slit in there that you can add the paint brushes to, which I think is super cute. And I have them facing up because I wanted you to be able to see the top of the paintbrush. Here I'm adding that sentiment to my canvas with some foam squares. I have my liquid glue I'm adding to the back of the easel so I can go ahead and attach my canvas to the front of that. And then I'll be attaching my critters. So the first one I'm going to attach is going to be the mouse that's kind of peeking from around the canvas. I thought that was really super cute. It's from the Virtual Friends add-on. So I added a little bit of liquid glue to the top corner and I just kind of tucked him up there. So that hand up there was perfect for him looking like he's hanging on to the top of the canvas. I added foam squares to the back of my easel so I can add that to the center of my card and it's going to be popped up. Now, a lot of times I wanted to talk a minute about my stamp storage as I'm assembling this card. A lot of times I get asked, how do I store my stamps? Do I store them by company? Do I store them by season? Or how do I organize them? For Lawn Fawn in particular, they are all in their own bins. So I have Lawn Fawn separate from everything else. And within Lawn Fawn, how I like to do it is, for instance, all of my mice stamp sets, whether it's Christmas, fall, summer, doesn't matter, all of my mice are together in one spot. And the reason for that is because so many of them can be used year round. 
So I just like to keep them all together. That way, when I want to create a scene, I can just dig through where all the different mice are and look through the sets, which is how I came up with having that cute little mouse in the top corner there. I just dug through my all of my sets that had the mice on it, thought he fit in perfectly. And then I found that plant on one of those sets, which I thought was just something cute to add into my scene. So I'm just continuing going through and adding all of my items. Some of them I added right to the front of the card with either tape runner or liquid glue. Some of them I will be popping up. So my little tubes of paint here, I did pop up and add down into the corner there. And then I have that jumping mouse, which I swear I use him on almost every card because he's just so cute. I also added that to the front with some foam squares as well. And then the last thing I need to add is my paintbrush. So I have my little painter guy there in the bib overalls and I just added that paintbrush with some liquid glue. Then I'll flip this over and I'm going to trim off any excess that's hanging over. So this final card size is four and a quarter by five and a half. And my final touch to this is adding a white jelly pen and just adding some highlights to like the plant, the sides of the mice, uh, some of the paint splatters. So this card was just using a couple elements from the summer release. There are a ton of amazing new products that came out, including a Sunray stencil, which I'm very, very excited about. I'm going to have all of my projects that we shared during Inspiration Week listed over on my blog that I will have linked down below, including pictures of this card. I just absolutely love these die sets and couldn't wait to kick off the summer release with a card featuring them. I hope you enjoyed today's project. I will have all of the supplies listed down below in the video description and over on my blog as well. Thank you so much for joining me and have a great day. Here are a few other videos I think you might enjoy.